Good morning. So, the good news is my ankle is pretty much okay. Might even be able to go for a slow jog at the weekend, I don't know. Probably not. Probably shouldn't push it. Uh, which seems to be the key with things like ankles. Very exciting today because while we're talking about, you know, like patience, what we were talking about yesterday, well, this is where the patience gets rewarded. Ankle feeling better and Falcon Heavy Test Fire gonna be happening later today. Yes, I'm really excited about that. Like I actually really can barely keep myself contained. The only thing that would top it is actually seeing the thing take off, but we're not quite there yet. This is interesting, just quickly, before I go to get Jasper. The Association of Consultancy and Engineering has suggested that road pricing is probably the way we should be doing it in the UK. Get rid of this vehicle excise duty and fuel duty nonsense. One of the issues with those being that they tend to be going down as EV sales go up. So, what's the solution? Well. Luckily, some bright spark has come up with a better idea than the idiotic thing that some states in the US do, where they basically just charge EV owners more than a petrol or diesel driver would pay in fuel duty over a year anyway. And which I think is a terrible idea. Firstly, because it's a flat fee, so it takes no account of usage. And secondly, it's actually disincentivizing zero emission vehicles. And on top of that, it's having an absolutely minuscule effect on the budget for fixing roads, which is ultimately what all these things should be about. Well, that and also hopefully changing motorists' usage of roads to something more sustainable. So this is what I think ultimately is going to have to happen, because you can't charge tax on electricity that goes into a car, because there's no way to tell what the source of the electricity is. It's not like diesel where they can put an additive in it so that it looks sort of red or blue or whatever weird color they come up with if it happens to be a lower fuel duty agricultural diesel. Then it's easy, you just take a bit out of the petrol tank and go, oh, look, this is agricultural diesel. Mm, you're in trouble. Just that doesn't work with electricity. And of course you can get electricity from anywhere. So obviously fuel duty is kind of going to be gone. And the problem with something like excise duty, annual flat amount that you pay for your type of vehicle is although that might incentivize zero emission vehicles over diesels, let's say, for example, big engine diesels, what it doesn't do is give you any kind of an incentive to drive less in the year. And if you make it a mandatory requirement to look at how many miles you've done and attach it to that, then it doesn't do anything to try and encourage you to drive on roads which are less busy. If you've got a five minute walk to the local school, but it's raining and you can't be bothered, so you jump in your four by four, you should have to pay for that luxury. Hmm, says the man who is just about to jump into his car because it's raining and go get his son, in fairness. It's not a five minute walk. Quite possibly going to be out of the house tomorrow, so uh, I'm not convinced the shoes I normally wear are massively great for my ankle. I think they kind of dig in a bit and a bit uncomfortable and I don't want to be wearing those all day long if that's going to be the case. So I'm going to try these skate shoes on and see how they feel. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, one thing's for sure, on the mend my foot might be, but mended it is not. Ooh, and this is not delightful weather. Yikes. I wasn't going to shoot anything while I sit and wait to get Jasper today, especially because they had that road closed thing again, so I've got like literally a couple of minutes before I have to go get Jasper. However, I spent those couple of minutes on the internet and I learned that Mercedes executives in India are urging the country not to rush into battery electric vehicles but to give it time for alternative technologies to come to fruition like hydrogen. Oh. You see the Indians want to ban petrol and diesel vehicles from 2030. Now I can think of one 
absolutely critical reason why the idea of moving to hydrogen is a terrible idea for a country like India in particular. And that is decentralization of power generation. If you've got an electric vehicle, then you can charge it using a few solar panels in a generally very sunny country, a smallish battery in an inverter. That's all you'd need and you'd be able to, I mean, you would need a reasonable number of solar panels. I'd say at least, probably including losses, three kilowatts of solar panels, three, four kilowatts would be enough. And then you'd be able to charge your EV and just drive it. Would that mean you would be able to drive it all day every day no well, no not with that level of solar panels but you would be able to drive it it would open up the option for things like maybe a community vehicle that is charged from a slightly larger system and you know available for people in a rural village to use i don't know what i do know is that it is a terrible terrible idea waiting for hydrogen to swoop in and save the day in particular in a country like india Although actually, generally, it's a bad idea everywhere. But that decentralization thing is particularly important, I think, in a country where there are more rural and isolated communities out there. Because it enables them to have that independence of energy generation. They're not gonna be generating their own hydrogen. Well, I suppose they might be, but it would be complicated and expensive and quite frankly, I doubt they'd be able to find the investment to, to do that in, in a rural community. So that's what I think. Mercedes, hmm. Well, that particular Mercedes executive, I get the impression that Mercedes corporate based in Germany has a slightly different take on things, although they're not ruling out hydrogen and I'm not suggesting people should rule it out. But at the moment, it is a long way off having proved itself viable. Right. And I can't wait to see if this Falcon Heavy can prove itself to be viable. Really looking forward to that. So um, I'm going to shut up now and because I'm using up all my time for today's video. So see you later. Okay, Jasper, can you go to again? So take your shoes off quickly. Go upstairs and get changed into your home clothes. And then... I've got a key ring treat for you. You know who gave this key ring treat to you? Well, technically they gave it to me. A very nice Canadian called Rich Tia. Good news is those, uh, what are they? Converse shoes felt much more comfortable on my foot. You see, I don't think it helped though. Where's the other shoe gone? Yeah, see, I don't think it helps in terms of shoe comfort that these are the shoes that I twisted the ankle in. So all the edges are at exactly the right height to sort of cause, well, to, you know, push against the bruises. Maybe. Look. I see. What is that, Jasper? Skateboard. And also it. Hi James, we saw this in a local gift shop and thought of you. Uh, I reckon the lump near one of the trucks is the electric motor. <laughs> I hope you like it and hi to Sophie and Jasper. Cheers, Rich and Jenny. Fantastic, thank you very much. I know for an absolute fact Jasper's going to love that because it will go on his book bag. Oh, exciting, just waiting for the test fire now. I literally just had to refresh the page because it like ground to a halt. Oh, literally just the exact point they'll be doing the test fire. Probably would have missed it by now. Wow, that is so cool. You get the idea as to how much awesome raw power that rocket must pump out. Wow, off the charts. Well, I'm very pleased they've finally done that. Hopefully, that has been a fully successful test and we can move on to an actual flight test of this massive rocket. Yes, as you can tell, I'm like way excited about it. I am going to say goodbye for the day now because uh, it's kind of late and I've got to get Jasper fed and up to bed and then I've got loads of editing to do because we'll be out of the house tomorrow. So I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already and I will see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye.
actually he's already got a bunch of them on his uh, school bag so yeah time to add one more I think now you've got a skateboard one on your book bag as well cool you've got the coolest ones on your bag haven't you we can have a banana